<laughs> and it is six o'clock and Dan Napton says he won't be here. So we have everybody here. I haven't heard from um, Lily. So, but she's, I think, in Nashville for the summer. So nice. But, summer. Yeah, summer. I'm not sure what she's doing, but that's what her summer, her summer job. So, um, oh, I noticed a mistake already on my agenda. It does say uh, April. April. <laughs> yes, that should June. Be that should say the June. So I think the rest of the people drop some. Okay. So any questions? I sent those out last week. If you got a chance to look those over, so. And if someone wanted to approve, make a motion to approve those. We could make those. Right. Okay, boy, this is going quick. So seven o'clock it is. So um the next thing on here, uh just a recreation programming update. How are things going? I mean, you've got to be out every day, yeah. how they're running and going, everything else. So yeah, I am very busy. My car is taking a lot of time. Um we're week five, so we can have lots of day camp, and we can have lots of day camp, and some of our other programming goes um, into the fall, and then we'll turn to update some programming and add some more stuff for fall and winter, and now that I have some beautiful winter activities on. Very nice. Can I ask a question? Um, I had some people approach me and say that there was some sort of fight at the day camps. Um, there was a... a it was a, the Olympics, so okay. there was a lot of banter going on, and one staff member just got a little frustrated with somebody being in their face and just pushed them backwards, and then it escalated to words of being called a fight, but it was no physical altercation other than him pushing him backwards. And they okay. are friends and used to live together and things like that, so there's no ill will. Okay, this is, like that. that's not the rumor that I heard passing I know, about, I, so. I turned into a game of telephone for me, mm -hmm. and he got to me, and I was like, oh, that is just fascinating. It took a day, and it turned into a fist fight. Like, yes, no, what I was heard, yeah, so. Like that at all, so, no, the, no. Thank you for clarifying, scary. so. So, yeah. so did, did things work out well? I know you were, you would talk about adding programs that because of, with, with the, the relaxation of the COVID things, some field trips, and we, we were able to do some of those. We were able to do things like the Olympics and gather all yeah. the camps together, which we weren't yeah. planning. Uh, originally, we had to keep all the locations separated. We couldn't have more than 36 kids in right. a cohort mixing groups and things. Um, and then we were able to visit Kershaw, and uh, we even had a couple of days where all the groups met together. Um, you know, again, like, and a day that we all met at Ananda, and then a day that we'll do that again next week awesome. for our end of year picnic and things. So, yeah, we were able to do some fun stuff and change up the original schedule after the regulations changed a week and a half before camp. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the end of the year picnic? At Ananda. I don't, okay. What, what day is that pic is the picnic? It's our last day of camp, August 6th. Okay. Are, are there going to be um, surveys sent around uh, after? The program I do send the surveys. Program. Yep. Uh, the first year I did camp, I sent a paper survey. Last year, I sent an email survey and got a lot less results, surprisingly. So I'm going to go back to the paper survey again this year. Let me send a postmarked envelope in with it so they just have to mail it back. And uh, does somebody, did someone put all the answers together? Did you look at that last year? I don't remember seeing the results of the survey mm -hmm. last year. I've never been hit. Asked to ask them to anybody, but yeah, I have them in an Excel spreadsheet. And then last year, I just had the survey monkey results, so I didn't do anything with them. Other than we we did get them back from them. when it was the last time it was just the Canada Day Club. Yeah, um, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I, don't, I don't recall. Well, we didn't I don't have think a program last right. year. Yeah, yeah, it was, so two yeah, years yeah, ago, last year. I, I don't recall. Well, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, two years ago, we did get those. I, I remember seeing those yesterday. results and it tabulated everything. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, that'd be good to see. That might be separate from what I did, but I know that I sent them for camps. Right, yeah, yeah. I do have. Lindsay, anything else on, on staffing that 
that's come your way, lifeguards and things for the parks? For uh, I kind of like everyone else, other municipality wise, with their lifeguards. A lot of our lifeguards are leaving mid August for college. Uh -huh. uh, we will still be able to keep Onanda open and we'll keep Butler Beach open as long as we can. Um, so, as of right now, Onanda will stay open on yeah. regular hours through Labor Day. Um, we are going to be reaching out to other municipalities just to see, but I've gotten calls from other places. Look, looking for our lifeguards. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, similar yeah. boat. Um, and a lot of that is actually from the fact that a lot of the courses for lifeguards were not provided this past year. Mm -hmm. So um, we are lucky that we were able to actually staff both our beaches yeah. this year. I got someone I'm going to send your way who Please just do. took it and didn't get a job at the beginning of summer. So yes. I'll have to send him your Please way. Do. Yeah, because he's a high schooler. So we still have um, those positions available online. So they just have to go to the county website and okay. apply and I get them. I yeah. check daily. Um, so Dax, town activity. This this is Lindsay. Where we just let you just make a big long list of what you've been up to for the last month. So, so much. So I actually put together just a very brief slideshow that I'm going to share with you guys, just on our Blue Heron projects that we've been working on. Oh yeah. Okay. Just to provide some updates. Um, I'm really big on before and after photos. <laughs> so. All right, so here is our pretty hideous before photo. Um, <laughs> it's not very nice, not very inviting. I know we've talked before about how I'm really big on first impressions, so landscaping to me is a first impression of our park. So my staff put together. Nice. Some nicer flowers, fresh mulch. Now this seems exciting, but what's more exciting is coming up. So this is before our trails going into the disc golf course, which were pretty much non-existent, overgrown, not very well kept. So this past month, my team has worked on updating the trails. Wow. We did a fresh stone base topped with stone dust to make it more compact, more user-friendly. Here's another before picture. Oh, wow. Do you plan on what do you what do you plan on doing to keep the weeds down in the path and years that you're not spreading gravel? Yeah, no, that's a that's actually a great question. So we started mm -hmm. looking into obviously chemical free spraying. Right. Um, and my new uh, full time laborer, he's actually certified to spray um, pesticides, which we won't be using, but he has the knowledge um, to make sure that we are keeping it maintained. So we don't really have anything we're spraying then. Um, not chemicals, no. Um, next, we are expanding our parking lot. So it's going to be a one way in, one way out. So they're working on that actually this week. Um, I did post that our parking lot will temporarily be closed this week while they work on it. Karen, I know you'll be very excited. So we actually have a pathway leading to the pavilion, which then directly leads to the trails, um, which is a lot of feedback we've received from residents. So that will actually be a paved path to the pavilion, not oh, just stone wow. okay. okay. So a great addition. Um, also, based on more feedback, too, we did add an ADA friendly quarter potty, um, which will, which obviously you see right there, um, it'll be easily accessible from the parking lot. Um, and that's going to be there until we get our permanent restroom fixtures in, in the next year. Where are we putting those? So we actually just met with MRB last Friday and we're debating on whether to use that fire hall like we initially planned or actually adding on to the pavilion when we do some pavilion updates and just adding the restrooms right onto the back like we do at Outhouse. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have any comments or feedback on that, I'm, I'm open to it. I think we probably will not cross the street, you know, if you have kids and stuff. Yeah. So I mean, if, if any additional pavilion, if we can afford it, is certainly a, 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 yeah. a better alternative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right there while people are enjoying the parties, right. they don't have right. to walk on. Right, right. across the way. street. Yeah. It's not a busy road, but you wouldn't want like little kids to wander around. Absolutely out, you know? not. No, and we want this park to, you know, start to build up a little bit. Um, and just, I don't know, I think be one of our flagship parks that we have. So. I know that's what we're going to be focusing on in our budget for next year, which I'll get to that information soon. Um, so just we're doing the trail improvements, landscaping improvements, ADA friendly Porter John, and a new paved parking lot with access from the lot to the pavilion and the trails. So that's what we've worked on this month. That's, um, really that's great. That's great. Yeah. 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 Like I said, I'm a huge fan of before and after photos. <laughs> 
Well, so. I bet you didn't have to go too far for the mulch and the landscape product. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we did not. So that is all I have um, as far as pictures go. Um, so we did meet with MRB, which kind of brings me into our next um, topic. I would like them to come to our next Parks and Recreation Committee meeting um, and actually have it at King Hall if everyone would like to do that. Um, I've already rented out King Hall for us. I just think it would be great for all of us to be present while we're talking about the uplands, um, while we're there, any concerns or any suggestions. Um, it was a great meeting that we had, a lot of big ideas. Uh, a lot of talk about the trails, um, obviously being on private property and how we can change that and things we can do, obviously, for the residents that surround our, obviously, our beautiful park and make sure that their stuff stays private and our park stays public for everybody. Which trail is it that's off? Do we know? That... It's uh, the one to the right. Okay. It's, it's on to the, the north. Property. Right. It's yeah. on the beach to the north. Yeah. 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 Right. King Hall. But where is that? In the uplands, it's one of the most beautiful. Yeah. But is it handicap accessible? Yes, I can drive. You can drive. Yep. You yep. can't drive into it. No, <laughs> you can get close. I, I can try. <laughs> but to open the gate for you, yeah. please don't. <laughs> My team has enough. To but <laughs> the trail in question again, it's where it's on the the north and east or north and west part of the. Kind of the north border. North border. Yeah, border, I'm sorry. Say, yeah. It's yeah. yeah, the north border. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's back it's way right back in. Or... Oh right. Oh the gully That's part the there. Oh right, right there. there. The north trail right on the gully. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Wow. Oh, occasionally you see a deer stand. Because <laughs> 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 I walked. Back yeah, the there's sand. there are definitely some deer stands in there. Well, I thought maybe it was yours. No, but then <laughs> deer stand might be on the neighbor's property. That's the problem. Oh, it is on the neighbor's yeah. property. Yeah, it's not, it's not on the town property, right? I bet he's so she's sorry. Yeah. yeah. And the trail might be on the neighbor's property, too. <laughs> so, yeah. Is that one of the trails that they think might be? Yeah. No, no, they don't think. They, they know. know. Yeah. It's, not, it's not in doubt. So, so we have been in contact with, um, obviously, the owners around there. Now yeah. that I'm a little bit more, a lot more involved with parks um, and with MRB, we're, we're going to have that meeting, so mm -hmm. to resolve this. Um, in addition to that, I have some exciting news too. So with our new reservation system, Astra, um, we did find some new data that we can pull from it. It's okay. the occupancy okay. data. And you can break it down from pavilion to cabins, um, which was very eye-opening. So what I'm gonna be doing in our next board meeting and every board meeting going forward is compiling that data so that way the board can review it. Awesome. Um, and it's also great for us too, so that way we know how to staff appropriately um, based on those occupancy level levels. It might be something that we want to do a summary at some point and put in the newsletter because we do have a lot of yeah. a lot of community members that are concerned that the parks are underutilized. So will you be able to ascertain how much income was brought in by the uh... yeah, that's great. Yeah, and transactions like credit card versus cash, mm -hmm. um, all that's available now, which is uh, I mean, so much better. Yeah. It is so much better. Now we can gauge what we need and, you know, it's checks and balances. So I'm excited about that. That's like my niche. Yeah. Um, I know we talked about Outhouse Park with our new pirate ship, um, you know, park fixture coming. So just based on the shipping delays, it is still slated to come in September. So my team is planning on building it by the end of September. So we're super excited about that. Can I make a comment about that house part? So when we were there for the really awesome first part of the, of the, the, the food, food truck part, the food truck line part, um, it was, I noticed that there were significant washouts in the trails leading down. Um, I personally massively injured my ankle five years ago at a Baker Park washout um, that has caused me a permanent problem with my ankle. I almost sued the city over it. So, um, so I, I would be, that. yes, I would like to prevent that for the town. And I know, I mean, they were gullies, you know, they're water, it's water washouts, but at least for the ones that have a little pitch going down to the, uh, the actual park, it would be nice if we either I paid close attention to them those. or considered uh, paving them. I mean, um, if you pave uh, Blue Heron and they're almost level. Level, yeah. It would be, it, it is a problem. I mean, mm -hmm. I think 
that would be a to, on the to-do list for sure. And also the one that connects over by the, not the pavilion, but the actual house down there, that actually connects to the rotary donated items that were for use for people that were in wheelchairs, which you currently can't access in a wheelchair because you'd be rolling over heavy gravel. So they have, those have been very underutilized. And I think that one would be the first one that I would pave. Um, but they both probably could use either paving or consistent maintenance. So I'm happy you brought that up. Okay. Um, I wanted to get everyone's input on um, 2022 budget items and kind of talk about paving at Outhouse Park with our new all-inclusive playground going in. Yeah. It makes sense to have mm -hmm. our pathways paved. Accessibility. And accessible. All of the above. Um, yeah. So my plan is to put that in the budget for next year. Okay. And make that a priority. Good. Because I agree, hundred yeah. percent. Uh, we do have our build date for Motion Junction, so it's a full week. It's the last week of August. Um, they are still looking for volunteers for Thursday and Friday. If you guys don't know what that is, it's the community build. So we're putting together um, volunteer groups, putting together the actual playground itself. Um, we're looking at donations from East Bloomfield. I know the city was talking about donating too, just to get them. That little bit more that they need. Um, if you guys know of any groups who are interested in doing something like that, you can go right on their website. I have not heard that in Rotary yet, so I would have them. I would recommend that they bring that up to the Rotary and Kiwanis clubs to at least be helping with the community build. Rotary has, has donated name, money. Was on that schedule yeah, they've donated money. We we, we yeah. But I, I haven't heard a request okay. for for help with the community build. But they most definitely have donated money both oh, yeah. of them. So yes, but, they have. But. Um, that's really all I have for updates at the moment. Um, I did want to get everyone's insight also on just some recreation activities for next year, seeing what a great turnout the music in the park was mm -hmm. and see if that was something we wanted to do next year, maybe have two of them or just, you know, I just want an open conversation so I can plan accordingly. Do we want to do a rain date on the one for this year? My only, my only thought is timing and getting it advertised enough and, and making sure it doesn't rain at all. <laughs> rain. Okay. Rain dance next okay. time. What was the turnout for the last one? Because I didn't get an ad for it until like maybe two weeks before. Turnout was great. And the turnout was amazing. Turnout was amazing. Oh, amazing. Oh, it, it was crazy. crazy. I don't yeah. think you'll have an issue with people <laughs> showing no. up. It had been it had been advertised. The town had it out there for about a month and a half. Probably. But it didn't really get hit hard until the last yeah. one. Yeah. And then I, I started say, seeing yeah. a lot. We almost went too, but it was my son's birthday, and I live right on Tampa Street with him from over, and then we saw the clouds. And was yeah. Like, oh, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I would also. Oh, we didn't. We I was wondering. The band. That's our only call. So that's nice. Yeah, see, that's that's the problem. That, that's that's the balance. Yeah. You get too many food trucks, they and then they and then they won't come back because yeah. they didn't. And then if you don't have enough food trucks. Well, yeah. yes. Both of those want to come back. Yeah, all three of Gee, them. Gee, what a fine. surprise. <laughs> right. That's yeah. what we were talking about. Well, and somebody and contacted me and I sent them to the town. Did you get another person asking if they wanted to do well, it? Food trucks. Food trucks. Food trucks were also hesitant of even coming because it's an event that's never happened. Like they asked, well, How many people did you have last year? We didn't do it. We didn't do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, if we got 100 people, we'd have been jumped. We'd have been back. Did we count? Sure. Did we ever count? Do we have any idea how many were there? Got, had to be about 100. I think, yeah, I think we well, well, here's the thing. I mean, when, when would we? Well, well, are we gonna? Well, let's let's do that, and then we'll come back to a rain date. So try to do June, July, August. Yeah. Um, um, the next date could be the rain date. And and I would like yeah. Heather, you have two movie nights scheduled for Baker Park. I would like to maybe do one at Baker Park and then. Um, do one at Outhouse Park, and maybe we could add for bounce houses. And I know Doug had said something the city doesn't allow bounce houses, or so maybe the second movie night or something we do at Outhouse Park, like we did the what two years ago now. Well, that was another thought so, that I had too is if we already had the um, 
one going on at Outhouse through Kids Town, which is not coordinated through the town, but it is technically coordinated through Canada Will Recreation because we're giving them our screen. Yeah. So we've agreed to sponsor with them. Yeah. So even though it's not the town, it's at the town park and Canada Will Recreation has been talked about. So I'm sure that it sounds like town yeah. wreck to people. So just in case you hear mm -hmm. those whispers, it's because of me. Um, and then for the other two, um, we have them. And then there's the third, the third weekend in August that has nothing. So I thought it would actually be cool if we had another one and just did one every Saturday yeah. in August. And then maybe next year plan to do two in July, two in August or something because, or like June's a little iffy to plan for, but it's dark sooner. So I like that idea, but mm -hmm. the weather and the cold, um, but it would be cool to like plan and have that definitely have like one of each yeah. each month, like one at the town, one at the city, and then have like two have the mountains houses or something. I also or think starting at five would, would be good because we had a bunch of people that were, you know, coming in they, before five. five. We'd have it four. You know yeah. what I mean? They, they were just coming yeah. early. Yeah. Really but, but I mean, the movie, we're not talking about the movie. No, not the movie. No, 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 no. Right. The, the band. Yeah. So, but I mean, I think we wanted part of the problem was is those food trucks, neither of them really got there punctually. Right. So they were yeah. they were there late and then they got hit hard right away. So they yeah. never caught up. So yeah. we just have to say, listen, you got to be there and set up at this time, serving food at whatever mm -hmm. time we decide, 5 30. So that people were like gathering for the night and then went and got food so they didn't have to drive through. I would be That's worried funny. about the number of people. No. Mm -hmm. uh, to tell you the truth, parking lots are full for that um, one. Yeah. I mean, we did a food truck. We, we did a food truck with um, the we did bounce house movie. food truck. Yeah, and I, I, I would say that, that I mean, I, I don't want to speak for the whole committee. I would like to do at least one of those late August, like we did that mm -hmm. first year. Mm -hmm. Time wise, that seems to work good for our group, you know, being back from start soon. Right. Right. You know, in yeah. August, yeah. it's yeah. getting yeah. you know, the, the problem, dark earlier. The problem yeah. with June is. It's like it's like until, until 9 30. Yeah, that's true. So, and there's also a lot of um graduation activities, yeah. And Tuesday seemed to work out really well, so, too. I mean, that was good. I, too, I think the family movie okay. night would be better maybe on a Friday or Saturday. And Potentially, then the concert idea was from the bands when we spoke to them two years ago. They yeah. said, These there's, so the many, days, yeah. there's so many festivals, we're going in so many directions. But you can find a quiet night. I think, yeah, I think Tuesday so. was really good for that too, because that really that was gonna end it. Yeah. 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 It's gonna be done by yeah. Yeah. Right. So right. Well, and you're also capturing all the people that are at soccer at Baker, yeah. at mm -hmm. you know, yeah. outhouse, right. other perks right. too, where that's mm -hmm. an awesome. So I, I think what this becomes other than trying to plan those events now is it becomes a budget thing. Yeah. Yeah. What do we wanna um well, we don't, I mean, for, for music night, we, we really don't have to spend the band. That's right. it. That's our right. cost. So it's under five hundred dollars. Right. Well, unless we get a, a band that's I mean, Yaki's, I think, did us a pretty good favor. But yeah. I mean, when we had talked to another band for two years ago, the cost was 500 bucks. Yeah. So, and then maybe some incidental cost in there. But we spent, and we spent a couple thousand on the bounce houses. And, yeah. Um, I mean, we read, I don't know how big's the screen and the, I mean, the system that, that you're planning on using. Um, I, oh, yeah. I mean, it was big enough. We used it a couple of years ago, and then Wood Library used it yeah. last year. So that's because we shied away from that because the feedback we had received was that that system really wasn't big enough for, for the big house better always. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, we had a great yeah. big, like a, yeah. It was like a blow. Yeah, huge blow. Yeah. You know, so. I, I think we, I think, I mean, the band night had a big draw, mixed ages, and was cheap for us to do. So, I mean, I. I, I, I feel almost like adding bounce houses and all of a sudden that when you already are at a park that's, that has a great a playground. Amount. That, that, that would be that would be just for the movie night. We'd have a movie night okay. to make, make concert, it more family friendly. Right. Yeah, concert would concert be the same, same thing. exact thing that we can yeah. do with one more food. Really <laughs> don't need a balanced house if you. I don't think you do. That's why I'm saying. I mean, don't need it, but that great big long yeah, yeah, bounce house draws them. Like, yeah, you see the people lined up to jump on it. It's a new attraction there. So I don't know. Could you check back into the, the old budget numbers and see what we had, and Absolutely. or maybe even how much we had fifteen hundred. Wow. Okay. For movie night, just for movie night. Okay, and I think we overspent that because we ended up renting white towers. Right. For which we would have to do it. again. Right. I was gonna say, in all honesty, right. though, I I honestly don't think we really need to do the bounce houses. Like I. 
it's just me. I, I mean, yes, it will draw more people, what have you, but. I'd like the budget for but, it, and then, I mean, have that discussion, discussion as we go on. My other question so. is, if you did to the bounce houses, when you go to, like, the Amherst game or anything like that, like, my son really loves lighting up, like, the face painting and the balloon animal people. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was just wondering, if you did that, would that be like, a friend team did a movie night yeah. at elementary yeah. school, and they did something similar. It was my first time, my son's first time ever getting face painting, he got a snake on his arm. He thought it was, like, the coolest thing ever. Well, and we did it at camp. Just like yesterday at Carnival, kids loved it. And I feel like you might be able to get more, well, and, and you might be able to get more smaller things for like the price of a and that's the thing too. I mean, we could get a corporate sponsor for something like that. You know, we that's could say we could approach yeah. somebody and say, Hey, we're thinking about adding this to our movie night or adding this to our 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 concert night. Would you be interested in in sponsoring that? So so which I think we had that discussion One of the before. Banks, but they have lots of money. Yeah. They keep it Things in the bank. Like yeah. <laughs> I know. Go figure. Call Frank. So. So so where do I mean? Where do we want to head budget? I mean, that's the big question you yeah. need now is budget wise. Budget for three is in it. So well, I think I think we have a couple of things working. I think the city. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, or I don't know how the whole thing's going to work with. The people that approach us to do movie night, it's not the city's idea. It's the people come right. to us and say, hey, will you help us sponsor this because they want to borrow the equipment or something like that or right. have, you know, free space. And we don't mind because it's nice to be able to do that. They'll pay for the license and things. Um, so doing another one, I feel like the town being able to budget for it and stuff like at your park and then you have sponsored ones. I don't know how you want to yeah. collaborate on that. I mean, I'm super happy to help plan and advertise and all that. So I don't know where you want. So we've had one movie the night for the, the city, city for the town, town and one for the city. And then maybe see, well, see I was have gets right other ones requests. like that they want. So we might have more than one from the city, but I right. feel like the town would be good if you had if you were planning three, then do like the, the truck thing and then the movie right. night and then like one other. I mean, I would like for, for this this committee to at least do one more movie night like we did. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to become the events committee. I mean, that that's I, we have originally kind of took some of these activities on because no one was doing them. I don't want to. So, yeah. I don't know if they had any. Movies, but, um, so one movie night. Two, the two concerts. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So fifteen hundred dollars for a movie night and five hundred. Well, it, it's. I can, I, can look at the, I can look yeah. at the numbers from the previous year. I guess my question yeah. was how many activities were we maybe thinking about next year at our park since the music yeah. event was such a turnout? I think we should do a, a Sunday or excuse me, a June, July, and August. I don't think and we can do June now that I think I, of it. I think we're too a, busy. Yeah. Well, okay. You have, a, you have a 60 day period of time. So yeah. do it every three. We'll do it the third week. In well, that's what I was going to say. If you could get yeah, like second Tuesdays July, or something uh, like I that. Yeah. Yeah. Best July that yeah. Yeah. You, you might period. be able to do it the end of the second week. But, yeah. Um, it's, you know, because it, then you come into the fourth and people are doing things. Uh, so then you're basically on two if you're doing one a month. And my hope is that, and, and I think this is what happened with the kids town thing was there people are going to start seeing that the parks are used like this. Mm -hmm. I, I think we're planting the seed. Right. Exactly. And I think our role is to, hey, people, there's great parks here, come use right. them. Right. And that's why you know, maybe in the future, we don't have to do an event because somebody else wants to come do one. I and, think that you'll probably get requests for right. them. And honestly, I can always forward them to you yeah. to mm -hmm. save you some money. So you don't have, like, it's, I think, $200 to get the movie license. And then we already have the equipment, which isn't as big or as nice. Right. But I mean, if we were to collaborate and come together and purchase equipment together and know that we're going to have these things regularly, right. we probably could come together and buy something really large one year right. and then keep using it and keep planning and then passing it back and yeah. forth. And then they're always candidate for recreation. It's not the city or the town. It's whoever right. wants to come host a movie night and collaborate with Canada right. Recreation, and then we are able to help them post that. And then I like the food trucks and things yeah. like that, and being able to add those things and say, okay, Kids Down wants to host this and they want to collaborate. We do have somewhat of a budget. What we can we do to help add to this? Right. And they kind of do right. the movie thing, and then we might do something extra. Yeah. That's kind of my yeah. idea, but we don't have a, an events committee or recreation right. committee or you know events budget in the city. It's all planned either through the bid or through right. somebody else coming to the city. So I think from our 
committee, I think if we look at one, one right. with the details to be worked out, whether or not yeah. we, we do yeah. a bond or not. Uh, and just a budget yeah. for uh, music one. one yeah, day. I'd like to, that, that late August seemed to work good at Outhouse Park. For the movie. Yeah, yeah. and then maybe, you know, a, a, a mid-July and early August concert. Just the same, yeah, you know, so maybe I either do it like you said, like Dave said, either every other week or pick like, you know, third, third Thursdays or second Tuesdays or whatever it is so that there's a, so that there's a thing. We probably should call the Granger Homestead and see if they're going to do that concert uh, series again. again. Yeah. yeah, because we don't want to conflict. But, but you know what, I almost felt like it was a different crowd. It is. That, that was, that was. They had, I go no, no, they had food I go truck, no. They yeah, had booze. yeah, right. They had it was in my backyard and I could listen to it and it was I mean both. Did they sell very tickets? Similar. Yes. Yeah, it was twenty dollars. So I, 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 they had a huge crowd. And I, I probably would have gone too. if it wasn't yeah. twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I felt like it, we had the, the crowd that came to the three concerts. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, but I, what I'm saying is, if we can choose, let's choose. Oh, absolutely. Or or yeah, yeah, absolutely. With them. Because they'll know so, their schedule. They're gonna because they're right. hired bigger bands, right. you know. And I will say, no matter what, the people I spoke to, both online and in person at that concert, loved it. They yeah. thought this was great. So, right no so right. that was definitely right. yeah. People were very happy we were doing it. So yeah, the only mistake we made, we should have just ticked them off earlier. They were ready to go. Yeah. We're like, well, let's hold off. Yeah, like, yeah. Just play. You yeah. know what I mean? Go ahead. So, Lindsay, what would you think? I mean, I, I think a thousand dollars is probably a little light. I mean. Hopefully we can get. A I band. would give us a buffer, to be honest with you. Yeah. I would probably set aside thirteen. For for, for two music nights. Yeah. And then. And the night I'll would, have to research a little bit further. Yeah, the light. Um, I mean, yeah. We did end up with a big cost with the lights. So. so the touch of the they, have, they have they have one set. Did you get those from Edward? Yeah. We borrowed one from Farmington. Doug went and I think went and got it from, from Farmington. With a parking light, parking so light. So straight big light lights. Lights. Yeah. So so I it, once I you mean, look again, at that, we can look into maybe they can spot they can help sponsor. Right. Or, mm -hmm. yeah. You know yeah. those, 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 yeah. those uh, street lights. Or we could get parking lot lights. Yeah. yeah. You turn on and off. Yeah. yeah. Right you have those on. Uh, those were on too. Yeah. I mean, we had. All of a sudden, yeah. no, no, I mean, like yeah. install parking lot uh, lights. So, the events committee is meeting the week of the 9th of August, right? And, um, you know, they actually are taking responsibility for events in our parks, uh, other than the 4th of July, which is their other thing. So, we're going to be discussing the uh, Halloween and right. Oranda, and we're also going to. Uh, they were excited to hear about a winter festival right. at Oranda. So we're we're going to attack that. I don't know what's well, going to awesome. happen with that. Would be but awesome. We're going to take a look at yeah. that. And again, that's my concern is, is I mean, we've talked, we're an advisory board right. for the town board. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we like I said earlier, we picked up a few events just to I don't want to keep picking up more and more and more right. events because there's only six, seven of us that are well that's mm -hmm. that's right. That's where I'm going because right. a, a municipality can only handle so many events right. before right. people don't want to come to them anymore. And our goal is to entice people to use our parks. Absolutely. So absolutely. I, I, think I was real happy when Kids Town was, was making yeah, a request. Yeah. I was very excited when they reached out right. about it. And then so. I partnered with Heather on, <laughs> on how they do theirs. Yeah. Um, you know, it might be the start of something, which yeah. is great. So it's what nice else to be like, oh, let's do this, this, and this. And like, I know it's available. And now I can be like, oh, let me request this. Are you guys doing the healthcare seminar in August at Rock Hill? Do you know what it's going to be? No. Some guy wanted to do it there. And I was like, look at Crouch and King Knoll. And he's like, oh, wow. And mm -hmm. then looked all into that. So now we're going to have to manage it because it's run so differently. And when you see like somebody come for an event and you're like, wow, this might not work the way that we do it, but it will work the way that you guys do it. And it's really nice to be able to have that partnership. So Lindsay, so you've got that well other budget. I mean, that was kind of the big piece. I'm just looking quick. Um, we did skip over. We'll come back to senior programming, Karen, just for an update on what you've been doing. But um, as long as we're on to, to Parks and Rec, yeah. you said you'd look through and I kind of just quick glanced through it. It's, yeah. But... I have a budget thing that came yeah. up when I was in a meeting this week with the CIC. Um, we were talking about um, the Middle Cheshire Road off-road trail there, whatever sidewalk, whatever you want to call it. Um, they, you know, as you all know, they have we have the actual um, 
the active transportation plan study that was done for Middle Cheshire Road and as a former trails committee member and complete streets committee member, that's very dear to my heart. Um, and uh, Doug had indicated it would be helpful if we were to send a letter as a parks committee again to the town board indicating we would like some implementation on some parts of that plan. I think for me personally, I would say, uh, based on my experience with residents, the one of the most important places to prioritize is uh, getting that trail completed to the city line, um, which would, according to Doug, require us to um, have some money in the budget for engineering for that. Um, so that I would suggest if we could write a letter so, to the so you um, switchback with that, that's what you're Yes, go yeah. past switchback eventually, but at least two switchbacks. So the trail currently ends at between uh West Ridge Run and the and 520. It's about 0.75 miles that, that there's no trail there. So, but so it's it, it's it's in it's the that, Paved sidewalk is what you're. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. So there, there's a whole section on it for the. But we're we're calling it an off-road trail or a multi-use trail. So we would have to kind of look in the, in the code and see what you know, what type of trail we want, would want to be completed there to have it done properly to the city line. So. Isn't most of that? It doesn't go. It doesn't go far past West Virginia. No, no it's. <laughs> but it isn't a lot of that um, gravel. No, it's no. it's really poorly done asphalt is what it is. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah. It's, but they sealed it a few years ago too. So it, it was put in with no plan, no engineering, just put it's in. Better than so, nothing. It's, it it's, it's, it's better than it's nothing, better than and nothing it is on a street that has gutters that you don't yeah. want people with walking three inches the between the gutter and the road. Yeah, and there's no real bicycle path on the street. You can but ride your bike. I was, yeah, exactly. It's not safe. Right? So, so if so, you have all not read the active transportation plan, it addresses all these yeah. ideas and comes up with very intelligent concepts of what to be doing. And I think at this point, we need to make sure every year the budget is is implementing some portion of that to, to you know. But that's the part of the Middle Cheshire Road um, plan. Yeah, in the extra transportation plan. That hasn't been approved so, yet. Yes, it has, yeah. It's fully, it's the board? fully adopted and approved, yeah. Okay, yeah. when did that happen? June, I think it was. Yeah, so, it was yeah. Yeah, it's fully adopted. So, so what are I mean, they going to start on it? That's what I'm saying. I think we need to indicate again that, that it's a priority to to begin work on that. So it's not going to start until money goes in the budget to be doing well, the engineering about for it. The uh, intersection of five and twenty. Yes, and, uh, which is going to be a lot more expensive than completing that trail to and, that intersection. So. Right, the, uh, doing that corner with mm -hmm. uh, whatever they call those little. The, the, spots yeah, the like. So they maybe then we can check, touch base with Doug on what would be required from us for that. Well, and it honestly would make sense for all of us to take a quick peek, at least at the executive summary of that plan, and be like, you know, what? Uh, not just me, but everybody on this committee, because this is our Parks and Recs and Trails Committee. What part of that plan would you all see as the biggest priority to be funding out as soon as possible? I, well, I so. guess I get caught up, and we have this master plan first. That's yeah. I guess that's mm -hmm. my biggest. Yeah. Um, I thought about putting money towards a, a different plan at this point, but no, but it, it's, it's still it's at, still part of right. it's. I, I mean, I would consider it part of that plan and a very well so, written plan from Bergman Associates too. So, but it's it's worth it, it, even just going through the executive summary and you can see, you know, what they they have literally. I mean, I was just looking at it myself today. They have literally action steps in there for all of us to go through. And the first action step is complete the final design of the pedestrian and bicycle treatments for the length of Middle Cheshire Corridor, funding from the town of Canandaigua and or a TAP grant, but we can't get a TAP grant without doing the engineering first. So, so that's, I mean, that's literally the first thing on the list, so, but. So maybe our talk with Doug then would be about what sort of engineering is there some engineering? I think we, we come up I think we literally just, if everybody agrees that that's the most important part of the plan, I think we literally just need to write another letter from the parks so committee indicating we want is, that. I mean, I think if it's very expensive to cross 5 and 20, let's go to switch back as step yes, one. Exactly. I mean, that, that seems to be the least expensive of all, unless that trail is going to be 10 feet wide. And no, I think no, no, I don't think so. No, and that's the thing we need to define it somehow, right? right. And so, if it's a multi-use trail, or if it's a sidewalk, or what have you, it needs to be right. defined. Right. So, so that's and for now, I would consider it a multi-use trail. So, um, but obviously, there's going to be some maintenance on the rest of it that's required as well. But it should be 
I think that portion is whether or not it's the cost of whatever the cost may be. I think that that piece of it is the most important piece. I, I agree. That finished. is the so, stuff that we should so, change that. So any guys are walking the road. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think we touched base to talk about what would come from us. Let's start with that chunk. I know, Lindsay, you have several other things from the actual master plan do, for next year. For next year. Yeah, I do. So um, Doug and I went through last week and just went over, you know, the things that COVID had prevented us from doing and those are the things I'm prioritizing. Um, but obviously I want your input as well um, in regards to that. But I think outhouse getting those trails paved next year would be a very smart thing to do, especially with our new all-inclusive playground. So that's definitely like a number one item on my list. Um, and then ADA accessibility down at Onanda and the beaches. Um, I know Karen, you're a big advocate for that. And I noticed on here, that's part of our short, that was part of our short-term okay. plan. Um, so a couple of these things on here, um, I obviously want to do next year so we can start getting caught up um, essentially is what we're doing. I would just highly advocate for that, what we're talking about in Middletouch Road, because that's been in the trails master plan for 11 years now. So yeah, and I would like to, and it looks like so. the first step, because um, I, I believe I was at that CIC meeting, yeah. is the cost for the engineering, because right. we exactly. can't even apply for a grant. <laughs> Yes. So we have that right. information. So that's that, and that's literally. I right. spoke to Doug. He just he would like a letter from our committee right. saying we would like Let's you to out, apply yeah. for and the cost of engineering. Figure out the details. We're, we're yeah. all in full agreement of finishing the sidewalk from where it ends to going to switchback. Yes. But I, I think without a little more discussion, I'll talk to Doug about what exactly it is he wants our recommendation to be. You know what I mean? So, okay. I mean that's yeah. what he told me. So yeah. it's just paying for the engineering. So, so. okay. Um, another focus, too, is going to be around Blue Heron with the um, development that's going on around Blue Heron right now. Um, there's a lot of items um, as far as a basketball court, horseshoe courts, um, and then, again, we met with MRB on the plan for that permanent restroom fixture. Um, I think how we have moved so bocce? slowly on bocce ball. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's used this year more than it's ever been. They got some. They have a group that meets every oh, Tuesday night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's that's the first time ever. That's the well, this time was they have a league. Shows. I had people talking to me about it. it right. Right. These, the, yeah, these are some things that came out of the. Um, Oh, was, that, was it MRB? It, it was MRB. Yeah. Yes. Just some, yeah. some ideas. Some ideas. So, so if you guys know that there's a need for something else or a yeah. different type well, of. Well, I, I think that part upgrade the disc golf. Yeah. A lot of people use yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so, so easy many. with a lot of people. Well, yeah. we had, we had an entire five? bus load get dropped off today to play. That's was, one day. I mean, you know, I, I rode my bike together yeah. today, and there were four or five people. There's there quite a few people that use it. I ride there a lot. I, I know. I know. <laughs> Maybe it's just the wrong time because <laughs> I, I ride there a lot. I thought the same thing that was not very well used. And, and I think we should upgrade it, and maybe people would use more yeah. of it because it's popular. It really doesn't cost us very much, it you know. So, right. but I also yeah. think we need to do a better job advertising some of these things. Yeah. Um, and that's something over winter I want to get better at myself is social media presence um, and having that presence because a lot of our residents don't know all the amenities of our parks yeah. and i think that's and a huge like, step you know, yeah. like a separate just canada will recreation where we both can just post to it because there's the town and then there's the city but they're like i don't feel like i can post a lot of just that's a good idea random recreation stuff on there and i don't post camp photos but i started an instagram page and that's where i posted the advertisement you gave me and I feel like that should just be like completely separate where you know, you can talk about disc golf there and you can talk about both beaches and we can like post pictures of things going on. So it's not like the firefighters are also doing, you know, safety checks. And there's also this Ontario County rabies clinic. And then here's a picture because it can like it just didn't seem to fit. And I feel like it needs to be a separate one. And then that's yeah, like I think that's a good idea. And, you know, how do you do this? How do you put something like that into effect? The other thing you know, I think is we could, we could do and then you create new. <laughs> in the newsletter, we could do focus on our house and, and talk about some of the amenities there, focus on Blue Heron and tell them what, what's there, focus on Miller. And uh, we have kind of done that, though. I mean, yeah, we have. look at the newsletter, we had that. But you have to keep doing it. You have to keep doing it. But it only comes out once a month. I know. That's, I know. I, mean, I know. But I would like to do a park. 
highlight weekly to just yes. keep that yeah. interest and engagement. What's happening in the parks? You should also do, yeah. you could do like a trivia question, you know, like where can you find, where can you find X in a park? You know, like for example, the, what is it? There's like a, lean, there's like a lean to probably not on park property in Onanda or something like that. And so you like have people post selfies in Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you, like, can you find me or something like that? Yeah. The events committee has done that. Has done that. But I think it's another way to gauge too, Adeline. I know you mentioned a lot of people don't feel that a lot of our parks are utilized, and mm -hmm. how do we track stuff like that? That could yeah. be a way to start that engagement and start pulling some of that data. I know we're going a little off topic, but I know a couple of meetings ago we talked about a QR code. Yeah, still in the works. Okay. Dan was going to generate the the code. the code. Okay. So more printing said they're ready to go as soon as we can get a mock-up. Okay. That's the actual size. <laughs> That's it's fine. just fine vacation the oh, person sure. more yeah. printing yeah. and then so but yeah it's oh. it's still chugging along okay. no that's great so, i think that'd be well i wish it was chugging quicker but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, can i ask back to a parks question so uh or back to a they're all parks questions to a budget question <laughs> yeah. um so uh what do we do you know what we currently have in the parks fund for park development because that um so i was not aware um, you know, I think Motion Junction is going to be an amazing addition to our our town, but I was not aware that we apparently used half of the parks fund to pay for improvements for Motion Junction. I don't think it was half of the parks fund, but I do know that it was more than we initially. Yeah, it, was, it was about three hundred thousand dollars. And I think, yeah, we had initially there was a certain amount set aside. Yeah, but we went over that. I know that. I just didn't notice that coming before this committee. And so it was a surprise to me when that went from 700,000 to, you know, 300 and change in the parks fund. So I'm just, cause that, you know, I, I had initially anticipated that we were using that for something like purchasing like the RSM land or something for a, for a park improvement. But I, I just was wondering why that wasn't brought to this committee's attention before it was spent. So, but at least the funding. Yeah. So just with the funding decisions. Yes. Okay. I mean, I understand, I, I understand do doing it. Um, I just, it's it, not a question, right? it, yeah, right. it was just yeah. a surprise yeah. to me. Yeah. So I will, um, I will pass that along to Doug. I don't have an exact, I'm so sorry. I don't have it's okay. Answer. It's, it's kind of a weird thing to find. And I know it's, it's, it's always kind of nebulous what it's actually at. Um, but that's the fun that when everybody spends a thousand dollars for a new bill that goes into that and it can only be used for new park development. So, so, and I, it's not actually called the parks fund. He gave me the name of it once, but I don't remember exactly offhand what it was called, but, um, but that was, that was a bit of a surprise to me. So, so that was my only comment on that too, budget wise. So. Yeah. And I can find that information for you. I can't, it won't let me pull it up right now. Sorry. Sorry. But yes, I will. I just dropped it on you. Don't worry. <laughs> I will take that information and find out an answer for you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Of course. Lindsay, what other types of budget things came out of your meeting with Doug as um, far as from the master? Plan? I mean, just the main focus on Blue Heron, Onanda. Um, I think we'll have a better insight on the Onanda plans after our next meeting. meeting. Yeah. 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 That, that's going to be a very important meeting for all of us to be a part of. Um, for key takeaways for next What's year. What's our date on that? Do we know for sure? I believe it's August 25th. And paving those access trails down to the to the playground and stuff. That just that's yeah, 25th, you're right. Used. Yeah, I think that's got to be a real priority. Yeah, I agree. But Mark, that's 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 it for the most part. Okay. And there's obviously yeah, and like I little just... details. I am focusing again on first impressions with our park. So. Yeah. As yeah. far as like our landscaping budget, it will increase slightly. Um, obviously, we're being responsible with our costs, but to make sure that when people enter our park, they know that it's a well kept, nice park. Is there is there any, any sort of playground through here? No, no. no. So that well, is that's in some of our future piece, plans. That, that was a, a phase two. For, <laughs> yeah. A blue heron? Did you say right now? Yeah, yeah. blue heron. Yeah. I, I guess it'd be nice to put the same. I mean, that's like a kid magnet, those those little things. So. Well, how many how many housing units are scheduled for that? Like seven or eight hundred. Uh, yeah. uh, well, a I'll lot. be behind Blue Heron. Yeah, a lot. I mean, you, you, I mean our house is just jammed. Jam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time. Jammed. Yeah. It's always one of the best parks. Well, and Blue Heron's <laughs> also our most northerly park, so it's kind of the only park that's helping that part of the town, really. So with a big so town folks nothing in there on the Auburn mm -hmm. trails that not under 
our no no that is no it is we i mean we're not going to try to finish that out from yeah I, I think that should be a big i mean that, that's we're almost those, there right we're so I mean, close yeah yeah so, I know there's some, I believe, some easement. Right. Um, things yeah. Like that. that is definitely still a topic that we are continuing to focus on and put money aside for. Right up on the top of that list. Yeah. I mean, the things that we can change, we are changing, but that's right. the easement thing we can't change. But we could get the trails right to the edge of that easement, you know? So, oh, yeah. or almost, yeah. I think, all the way close to Thomas Road. Yeah. So, and, and I go back, you go on the Auburn Trail from, from Farmington to Victor, and part of it goes on the road. So maybe if we could get to Thomas Road, maybe maybe the trail on the road. goes on the road until you know you, you cut around and then someday we're gonna get up to you know the land behind Janekos there. Maybe 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 that's the, the, the band-aid until that's the that's the area where there's the problem by Purdy there. Is that where the connector problem is? Or I thought it was over by the boat storage on County Road 30. Isn't part of it the on um, that they need a new water tank on uh Purdy, Purdy, I think. Oh, by well, well there, there, there's some issues with, with that, the, but I don't. The the who's I can't think of the one that's doing that. There, there's two consultant firms working. One is going from. One's coming from Private and one's coming from our. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and and that's more of the right away things. Yeah. But I think we got. It would be nice to have some money now to, and, and I think getting across, County Road 30. Is going to resolve itself with the the, the a little left hand turn by German Brothers property. Yeah. And then, I mean, there's going to need to be some money to get to, over to Brickyard Road. Yeah. So I mean, I would like yeah. to see some. You know, well, just money. If guys, if they're, it seems like we always put the guys when they're not working there. So when they're not working there, they could plow up some stuff and dump some gravel. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's going to be the thing is we have to. I mean, like the top right. of that berm has to be. You know, to a certain spec. stone dust or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right, and I mean that's going to take money to, to buy the stone dust, thing. right? So, but anyway, there should be somebody in there for it. For the yes. Auburn Trail, yeah. it's, right. yeah. it's a very so good point. Of that. No, it's no, a very no, good point. It's on the forefront. Yeah. I know yeah. Dave and I are holding our old trails <laughs> committee <laughs> memberships. <laughs> oh, it would be great to hop on an and ride a bike all the way oh, to, right. to Rush, New York. You know, so. Uh, yeah, as long as is there some something in there for the yes. Auburn Trail too. So yeah, it makes sense. And, and I think long range. I, I think I would rather spend some more money on a playground for Blue Heron than a, a bocce ball court. I mean, that was something that didn't Rotary pay for the bocce ball court? They did. I think they did. Yeah. Yeah. Cost them, so, they did. yeah. I would say if there's a, a need for something like that, maybe we could get another service organization right. to. But the uh, playground for there is going to be fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. well, it depends. That's how I much. Mean, that's how much the pirate ship costs. Yeah. But we got yeah. twenty five or something, right? Uh, oh no. no, it was expensive. Yeah, yeah. so it's going to be seventy five or eighty five. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. installed it was like seventy. I thought, if I remember correctly, but it was not cheap. What are we doing the install? Yeah. To, to cut back on some of that. Yeah, it was. And then malt, I mean, but I mean, do malt, we don't necessarily yeah, need yeah, like yeah, a pirate yeah. ship playground there no, either. I mean, they're right. much they're right. much less expensive options. Right. Too, so. wanna, I mean, well, we're gonna do it once. So you know what I mean? I, yeah. I say right. we do it. Well, right and right. and again, I mean, isn't that something we could also be approaching the developer to help us with as well? If that's if they're if they're not building one in theirs, we could be asking for for it's assistance one. with building ours. So. So, but who built the one in the little loop around in Sunflower there? Did those are usually the developers that put those in there. So, I mean, but like my neighborhood is our HOA did it. Yeah, um, yeah because they own that before so. that the town owns it now. Right. Then yeah. it's yeah. donated to the town. Yeah. Yeah. Brookside. Yeah, Brookside was they yeah. did it in Brookside, so and then yeah. now yeah. we've acquired it. So, nice and the same thing with the one on out. Overlook. That one is also town now, I believe. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Overlook. Yeah. 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 Overlook and Old Brookside. Yeah. They both have one. So right. so that one's really small, the one on, on Overlook. But yeah. But the I mean, so obviously something a little bigger than that would be nice. But I think I mean we and we talked, I remember years ago we were talking, wasn't the motion junction people, weren't they originally looking at Blue Heron? Because we were I seem to remember. I think there was some talk with that. Yeah. yeah. With, with the were, water. Yeah. Yes, the water was a problem. Yeah, no, but but we were, that's what we were originally talking right. about 
you know, right. right when we were doing the 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 plan and everything, right. was getting a playground in there too. But so, Lindsay, I think if, if we add something with your budget discussions about definitely adding in the the um, Auburn Trail, some money to do what we can around by the airport, or just find um, the materials. If we can and, just work on that. And what now. what would we need to put into some engineering to help with that other the, yeah. the plan for the Middle Cheshire Road? So. Um, I think those would be two big things to, to add to that. Thank you guys. So, can I say a nice thing? That's it's off budget topic. I went to two uh, graduation parties at Onanda, one of which was my son's graduation party in this month, and the new like I guess game room whatever you want to call it was a huge hit sunny windy yeah. nice weather horrible weather all of the teens were there was a magnet they loved it if we couldn't find them they were always in there and it was great we do need to upgrade the pool stuff the pool equipment already because some of it's, it's broken already <laughs> um, but yeah. that is a big hit so that was that was yeah that they and they all had gone all the kids in mine had all gone to camp there and they're all like we miss all the cool stuff that used to be in here but this is awesome so so they were very happy other That's than great. wanting to know what happened to all of the specimens that were in there <laughs> think about it, too, back to um mrb and in, in the talk at next next month so will there be some money for some of that work also we've talked forever about a new cabin up on the uplands i would like us to maybe have a very serious discussion about it mm -hmm. um and we're only going to be discussing the uplands just so you guys know at this meeting um obviously right. lakeside open next later. next but week. Next i week. to be honest with you and just my assessment and conversations with them i don't know that a couple of our cabins will make it to next season mm -hmm. so if we are interested in you know a three or four season cabin that's something we need to discuss and you know well i i think for sure uh, there was talk about maybe bringing a, a prefab cabin last year mm -hmm. to the uplands and, and may, I, I thought maybe even there had been money budgeted to do that there so is. yeah okay so I, I think that would be a huge step for next year and the other the other thing that we've talked about several times is um what would it cost to go in pick one cabin on the on the lower onanda and renovate one cabin mm -hmm. so I, I think both of those two things would be yeah, I and I would start by renovating the least used one first and progress to the most well, utilized and now I one. Have that data. So yeah. yeah, to determine which is the least used out of the cabins. Mm -hmm. I, I we're talking about like four season yeah. upgrading or, with or, HVAC. I mean, maybe not necessarily the least used. Maybe there's something in the middle that would make more sense to renovate. Them. Oh, I'd start with the so, least used one because then yeah. people will go to it first if they're looking for the nicest, yeah. newest upgrade. Well, well, right. determine that the reason it's not being used is because it's hard. Oh, I mean, it might be location. The, the oh, it's probably yeah. Smaller. It's probably like what is it, adobo or whatever right. it is. The one right. of those I think two. Some discussions so. about maybe it's time to pick one of those cabins and so at least upgrade the beds so well, i i think i think a whole renovation yeah. inside and oh yeah you know, let's have, start with the beds you go down and look at any yeah. of those yeah. Yeah. Look at those, yeah, yeah ask them to go in and look at those cabins and those were prefabs they just came and set them on a pad yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah. I rent, nice furniture. Really? yes, yeah. I just rented one at, yeah. at um, Darien Lake and, you know, just a, it's a similar size and just a so, really, really great, and they're prefabs yeah. as well, so. But if you, some budget numbers then yeah. to decide, so, but. Definitely. And any, anybody have any other budget thoughts, ideas? Yeah. Seniors. That's Karen, you're next yeah. on that. Okay, you're, you're, next on the list. This is very exciting for us to talk about. <laughs> I well, talking about budget, I caution you to be I okay, do budgeting for years. And y'all, I know you always ask for more. I said this to you, and expect to get less. That doesn't mean you should always ask for the world. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like you're asking for an awful lot. And I worry about what will be cut when it comes when push comes to shove so it might be a good idea if we could have a list of what we've discussed and prioritize the list at uh, the next meeting or before the next meeting also that's, speaking that's, of budget where does like my role as staying in the town is that just like between me and doc or is that like 
holding committee? Is that like who does No, that I believe that's committee? an agreement between um okay. well like they'll say things like, oh yeah, this, this, and I'm like, oh okay, like when do I find out this information? <laughs> who do I talk to to know? Well, I feel like this year I'll be your point of contact. Doug and I like ran into each other and said that we needed to, but I didn't know like where that conversation actually lied outside of that. Doug. Yeah. Most likely after I have <laughs> my um I have a budget exactly. meeting with Doug regarding parks and rec in the next week. I just I you know, said something like do we buy the life? I would yes. <laughs> All right, you gotta line this up and drag it crazy. Can't handle it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so when I know so you had talked about me and Doug about budget stuff, yes, for, for parks and rec, when yes. you said like Friday, the day after tomorrow, I can't remember. Oh what. gosh, no, I need a little bit more time. Okay, I that. couldn't remember what our meeting is scheduled in the next um, the following Friday. Okay, so that's where we go over like the preliminary stuff, and then he just makes sure bringing all that together since this is my first year, so just gotta make sure I'm budgeting correctly. So would you have some more feedback for us after that meeting with Doug about kind of where we stood with some of these items? I mean, I don't know how I much. I mean, truly, I feel like we're going to have a lot more information after our August 25th meeting with MRB in yeah. addition to that meeting that Doug and I are going to have. Okay. So what I can do, um, I can come up with that list of our, you know, our wish list that we have for all these items. And then if it's something that's not feasible, then we can go through and prioritize like what's the most important. I am also very ambitious and I'm also requesting to have a couple more seasonal staff members next year to try to accomplish more, but obviously that all depends on the overall budget. And I agree. I think that's one of the biggest things that's hindered us is, is workers to do the work. Yeah. And qual the quality of candidates yeah. as well. Yeah. No, I agree. So I can I can get that for you guys um, and send it out before the August 25th meeting so everyone can have a chance to look at it um, in addition to MRB. And then I think that would be our best route unless you guys think otherwise i think that would be good so but again i, I think that meeting that you and doug have is going to be a very important meeting because yeah. you're going to have ideas of how much money there really is yes. like karen said it's you know it, that's the reality right. you know yeah it, so well there are some things that are it's critical that we do yeah. for right. the example the habits that's going to take a big chunk of budget money right yeah, because when it was priced out for those prefab cabins, that was pre-COVID, mm -hmm. and they were priced at thirty thousand. And as we all know, the price of those materials have gone up significantly. So right. I am requesting a requote to kind of get a better gauge of the what we're material at. prices are coming down again. Yeah, but they're so, coming down from sixty dollars a sheet of plywood to fifty dollars a sheet of plywood. That was so, twelve dollars. Yeah. What I think, although one question I would ask someone, Lindsay, is it would be good for us to know what we are currently bringing in from cabin yeah. and pavilion rentals, yeah. That's because, yeah, That's yeah because I would say that, I mean, we should be able to at least have that much to put back into the, you know, bare minimum, um, but, and obviously, if we're getting nice prefab cabins, they'll be more expensive, so, so, which will help offset that too, so. Correct. I can I can compile that data. Um, it's I know the July, one thing we've got that we can actually yeah. offset <laughs> the cost. So, and Karen, do you have any other information on the senior pro? I know that, that you've had several meetings. Heather, you were part of some meetings, Lindsay, with Where, Will Summit, and yeah. well, Lindsay was attended the meetings too. Um, we are going ahead with partnering partnering with Will Summit for two events a month. Um, for two of their events a month. We're starting our weekly um, meeting on October, or October August. August. August 19, mm -hmm. uh, from 9 to 11 each week. So people are happy about that. How many people do you have coming to the picnic so far? We must be close to 20. I don't have an exact number, but I've been getting calls yeah. left and right. So I would say at least 20. I, it, we're getting a, a pretty good turnout yeah. from the uh, Facebook and for the um, luncheon at Quail Summit, which is a week from Tuesday, right? Yeah, right. Tuesday, Monday, Monday, week from Monday. Um, part of the problem was Quail Summit put in a five dollar fee. Well, there is no fee for Kendall residents, so I've been getting calls. She's been getting calls. <laughs> 
five dollar fee and I'm you know I'm telling people I, I'm just taking their names I, I mean I'm only taking their first names and where they're where they're from uh, no cost for for um, town and city residents so we're looking at that as being a kickoff to mm -hmm. try to boost the the um, interest the senior yeah. program which We'll, we'll have to wait and see till after that meeting because I would like to bring back uh, trips. And I've already received some information about some trips, but I want to wait. Uh, I mean, I want to put, I, I, my goal is to subsidize town residents on the trips. Even if it's five or $10, it makes it look good to people and, and it entices them to join. So, and they can afford it. You know, anyway, so, uh, but I don't, I won't know until we have this. And do you want to reach back out? I mean, you worked with, with Russia, with someone out of Henrietta, maybe, and someone out of Victor well, on that, those yeah, trips? Well, I have a contact with the bus company. And right now, we always um, piggyback on Henrietta and Victor. Right. Henrietta, because they have a huge senior right. program. They, they have a big senior center. And it's, it's really nice. Victor is still doesn't have their recreation programs yeah. back completely, but we also have people from Farmington that join them too. Yeah. So, and there is a senior club in Farmington. So those three, and the last thing I got from the bus company is they actually put people up at the tops in Cannon Day One. Go figure. That's a great location to pick and so from. It's great um, that they're doing that already, and yeah. it won't be something that they would have to manipulate to be able right. to achieve. So yeah. um, we'll we'll see. But they, I want I would like to do at least. I, I've had people ask for trips. Mm -hmm. You know, Dennis asked me. He's painting my house. He said, "When are you going to get a trip together?" <laughs> But it, there's people asking for those, and therefore, they're not just for old people, you know, young people, 50 year olds, they can come too. But not me. <laughs> <laughs> Got so a couple more you'll, years. You'll let us know anything you hear on any of those trip things you'll yeah, pass along. Yeah, I'll, okay. keep, I'll keep it for I think we might want to put a little bit of money in it. I can't see the senior budget being more than $2,500. I don't know. What the cost of Quail Summit is going to be, though. That's another no. I know I'm curious too, but I, I, it will not, in my opinion, I don't think it'll come close to you. No, I don't either. But uh, I mean, Does she? The, so the city the probably chat, has. Did someone? Oh, yeah, is there a chat? A question oh, I was talking to Kathy. She did have to leave. Oh, okay. Oh. Sorry. No. So I just uh, Dave saw the one up there. I wanted to make sure we like, do we have yeah. a chat? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she just said she agreed. Okay. So I would like to know what the city's contribution is to the senior program. So, so the agreement is 50 50. Okay. So, so if we put in 2,500, they will be built up 2,500 in their budget. But I'm we have to, for, for 2022, we have to come up, I think, with, not I think, I know we need to come up with what that amount in total is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, want to talk. That's I mean, but frankly, I believe we're going to be shut down again because it's pretty concerning what's going on in the country. Um, and you're going to have a lot of seniors that aren't going to want to participate in things. So we can cross that bridge when that yeah. comes. For now, I'm excited for all the events that we have scheduled. Oh, I actually Do we? You know, it's 2022 that yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Karen, when we book a trip, do we have to pay a deposit ahead of time for it or it, it, nothing's paid till it goes? When the town books? If we did like, you know, a, I don't know, I a glimmer glass know. opera trip or something, would we be prepaying for part of that or would it get paid There's when it happens? We don't, the town doesn't have to, we just offer the trips to people. Okay. Right, the bus and, bus but you, you were saying if we help sponsor people or something for it, you know. A subsidy for it? Uh, I, I'm looking for a subsidy mm -hmm. for it and not, not a big one. So the say the trip is $90 to the merry go round. That's usually what we pay are. 10 bucks a person so or something. Yeah. It would be five to $10 less for city residents, city and town, town residents, because 
Farmington people that I I have I know people in Farmington they do that, and yeah. they they participate. So they would pay ninety dollars, and the town and city. Would pay so so my question is, if we were to do something like that, and they had a trip to Cooperstown or something, would we be paying that no matter what, or does that only have to get paid if the trip actually occurs? If they, if it actually occurs. Okay, so it's not really oh, yeah, any problem for us yeah. to plan it. If then if it gets canceled, it gets canceled. So yeah. And we did do Cooperstown. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think even if there were in the case of a non refundable deposit of some kind, that would just be their full responsibility. Mm -hmm. Whatever subsidy wouldn't be paid until right. like that, So that's what I'm going to say. It's going to get whacked on that. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what when we had like school trips planned and they got canceled for COVID, we didn't get refunded for everything from the bus company right. exactly because they didn't go anywhere, but they, they were the one, 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 one group that was problematic with getting it. Yeah. yeah. So any other, other, or an other? I think we're in a good place. The next meeting is August 25th, the right day. Yes, it was, it. Mm -hmm. it was okay. August 25th. And that will be at King Hall. King Hall. King Hall. Yeah. Yeah. And Maybe King Hall is the one know, right. I won't, be, I won't be there for the 25th. I'm going to be out of town. So we can touch base on the MRB stuff. The one Maybe when you meet it's with right Doug as Beth, you start to go up. Yeah. Maybe when you meet with Doug that Friday, what Friday, the, yeah. not this Friday, the next Friday. Maybe if I'm <laughs> free, I could, we could come over and touch base. But, and we should make so. sure that gate's open so you can drive up there Absolutely. close. So. Yeah. yeah, that would be open until 9 o'clock anyway, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I will put a sign reserved for Karen that makes it right there. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just put a big sign. Karen, Karen. turn left here. <laughs> Actually, I'm looking for a, no. a scooter, one of those. I can maybe FaceTime or something. Yeah. I could do it from my phone. That's true. Do we have Wi Fi down at We don't have Wi Fi yet, but we do have internet on Lakeside. Yeah. So. But uh, no wife. Yeah, because come computer. to think of it, I, from that's my graduation phone parties, phone I seem to remember that's why the yeah, uh, I mean, game room was so phone. popular. The Wi Fi was very <laughs> spotty. <laughs> and it works through yours, so you have all. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree with it without it. What? Are we, are we <laughs> yeah. So, any, anything else? Or We're good. We're good. I'll second that. <laughs> Video is stopped. Thank you.